Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of Parv's Kitchen. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you're all safe and well. Once again, I am welcoming you into my kitchen and what I would like to share with you this weekend is a recipe for something called Missy Roti. Roti, you probably know, is flatbread and the Missy part means that it's savoury However, specifically, it's usually made with lentils. And what I did last weekend was I made a portion of green mung bean dal. I've got the link to it below in the description. And what I'm going to do with the bulk of that dal actually, because I'm making a big batch, is use it to make the chapati dough and then make misi roti. Missy Roti has wonderful memories for me. It's something that was a staple at picnic weekends and going away and it was just so full of good memories. It's just wonderful, full of flavour. You can have it piping hot. You can have it at room temperature, cold the next day. It doesn't matter. It is the most amazing roti. You can use it as a wrap but always serve it with some pickle. It's got to have some pickle with it and it just is a flavour explosion in your mouth. So this is how I make my Missy Roti. I've taken five cups worth of flour. I use this quite traditional old drinking glass. There's nothing fancy about it. So five of those, I know two of those will give me five decent sized chapatis. So just multiply it up. I have got my green mung bean dal already. I'm going to pop half of it into the chapati flour and then I've got my jug of water and I'll make up my chapati dough for my misi roti. Okay, I'll let you see as I add the ingredients. What I've done is I've added in half of my mung bean dal. Remember that was dried one cup's worth. And now I'm going to mix it through before I add any water. I'll let you see the kind of texture I get. Now, this is where we're at with one cup worth of dal and five cups of flour. It's quite gravelly. So what I decided to do is add in a little more of the dal. I'll let you see as I go. Now that's just about another third of the dal added and that looks much, much better. I'm going to add a little more water, knead it through and I'll let you see once it's done. So that's the chapati dough all made beautiful, olive green colour with the beans and you can smell the spices through it. It's incredible. Whilst you're making your dough, if you feel that it's a little too sticky, just sprinkle over a little more chapati flour. That's absolutely fine. I've kneaded this probably for about six or seven minutes, nothing amazing. And using the old steak measurement, you know, you can measure how your steak is, I would say kind of middle finger. And that's how you would check to see how your chapati dough is. Okay. Now I'm going to cover it and let it rest just in my kitchen until I'm ready to make the chapatis. So guys, I have my chapati dough made with the mung bean dal, which is looking great. I have my belaytan, my tray with my chapati flour in it, dry chapati flour. Hair tied back because it's time to cook. And what I'm going to do is make berry the little rounds that we're going to make into chapati. I'll let you see how I do them. Super simple. You take a little handful of the chapati dough, dust it in the flour, and then just make it into a lovely round. That's one pair of all lovely and done. Now I'll do the rest and then I'll let you see what happens. That rests in the blatant. I've rolled out 
a few berry and it's looking lovely rolling pin at hand and I've also got my shabba ready with my bona which is the cover for your chapatis now I'm going to make them I'll let you see how easy it is to roll them out I'll take one dip it in flour and then I'm going to flatten it out a little bit just rolling it through my hands flattening it with the heel of my palm And this is what I end up with. Pop it in flour again. Shake off some of the excess. Put this out of the way. And I'll roll out my roti. Don't worry if you've got bits of the mung dal flying about. That absolutely happens. And if you go nice and gently with it, it will be fine. Now, because there's quite a lot of mung dal in these chapatis, I'm doing it quite gently because what I don't want are huge holes in them. So there we go. First one, relatively round. And all I'm going to do is flip that onto my griddle or tava. Good. I'll let you see as it cooks. Onto the tava. And it's looking gorgeous. You'll see once it starts cooking, it becomes darker in colour. Don't be perturbed. And also the thing about Missy Roti is that it won't puff up the way ordinary roti would because of the volume of protein, beans etc in here it's going to be absolutely fine. You can begin to see the colour darkening. All I'm going to do is turn it around a little. In the meantime I've got another pera flattened and ready to go. Now this is darkened and you can see the tiny little brown spots on there as it's cooking. I'll get this one ready. And don't worry if your chapati isn't round. Believe me, it tastes just as good whatever shape it is. Please use tongs if you don't feel comfortable using your hand. Absolutely fine. Look, you can see it beautifully cooking away. Another few seconds. And that's it done. One Missy Roti. Beautiful. There we go. I'll pop that in the shabba get another one on. Gorgeous. And now we'll just do the rest and let you see once they're all done. So guys, that's a huge, huge happy memory for me from when I was little. Picnics with Missy Roti. I really hope you enjoyed the recipe. Please do continue to spread the word. Tell your friends and family about the recipes. Um, I really look forward to seeing you back again next weekend. Do look after yourself. Take care now. Until next weekend at Parv's Kitchen, bye-bye.